incident that we just heard in the gospel reading is kind of incongruous to what we usually think about at Christmas time. The old carol talks about Christmas being a time of tidings of comfort and joy. And yet we just heard about this, this horrific event, the murder of all these innocent children, which is hardly a tiding of comfort or joy. And yet it is part of the nativity story. And the evangelist Matthew includes this to remind us that the world that the Messiah is born into is a dangerous world. It is a world of pain. It is a world of fear. It is a world reigned by shame and death. This is the world that the Son of God enters into. And we note that this is the world that the Son of God intentionally enters into. This is one of the points that Paul makes in his letters that he intentionally empties himself and, and, and enters into this world even though he doesn't need to. His famous words in the letter to the Philippians, he did not see being equal with God a thing to be grasped onto. But he came and took the form of a servant and accepted death and even death on the cross. So it is a broken, fallen, and, and dangerous world that Christ enters into, and that danger is always lurking in the background. And even when we talk about the events of Christ's life as a little child, they are still there. He intentionally enters into this world, and he does so to offer us a way through it. In fact, more than that, he enters into this world to be the way through sin and shame and death. He comes and enters into this world, into the fullness of our human experience, to take us by the hand and to lead us out of this world to be where he is, seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. So this is why we remember even these difficult things. But there is a very, very important point that we need to understand as we consider what we heard today in the Gospel about the, the murder of these innocents. And that that is the fact that this tragedy was entirely man-made. That Herod hears news that a king has been born. And he's He's upset, he's afraid, he's angry that there's a usurper now hanging around. And he gets this crazy, horrible idea. And then he chooses to act on that idea. The tragedy today was entirely man-made. And if we think about how much how much struggle and how much stress in life is absolutely just like that. It is man-made. It is based on decisions that people make. I heard this interesting study once. It was, a, it was research into all the famines of the 20th century. All of them. And they found one common theme through all the famines of the 20th century. And it was that the chief cause of the famine and the thing that created the most pain and the most destruction was not that there was not enough food, but it was, it was poor choices in how food was distributed. It was leaders making choices that created these tragedies. How much pain in life is man-made? And how about this? How much pain in my life is self-inflicted? These are important things for us to consider. At Christmas time, I said that, that Christ calls us to be ambassadors of his peace and his goodwill in the world. 
A world that hurts so much needs peace and needs goodwill. What does it look like to be an ambassador of peace and goodwill? To somehow try to, to hold off this tide of misery that can happen so much so at the hands of human beings? Well, look further on in the Gospel of Matthew. Read the Sermon in the Mount. Or if you don't have that much time on your hands, just read the Beatitudes. Read each beatitude and just think about it. How can I apply this in my life? If everybody was willing to do that and to seriously apply those precepts, it would be a much better world to live in. So it's December the 31st. And it's time to think about the new year and new year's resolutions. Well, how about this for a new year's resolution? To live the Christian life, to walk the walk of a disciple of Jesus Christ in a way that takes these things seriously, in a way in which we take them to heart and we try to apply these principles in our own lives. And by doing this, each and every one of us does our part to make the world a bit less dangerous, a bit less stressful, and a bit less random. And by doing that in our own lives, step by step and day by day, the entire world is transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to him, and to his eternal Father, and to his all Holy Spirit be glory, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of my podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Eastern Orthodox Christianity, but aren't near an Orthodox church, you might be interested in the Fellowship of St. Theophon the Recluse, an online community for seekers and inquirers all in that same situation. We have members in the U.S., Latin America, the British Isles, Africa, and Australia. For more information, message me or send me an email. Until next time, take care and God bless.